Before we go any further into the Liberty Walk story, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps us out in the algorithm. Disrespectful to classic cars. Sacrilege. Piece of shit, c fart, put it there. Looks like he took out of a piece of shit put it up, up, up on her butt. If you've heard of Liberty Walk, chances are that you've got an opinion on them. But there's a lot more to Liberty Walk than wild body kits, over fenders, and stoking internet flame wars. Who is the madman who came up with these designs and body kits? How did he change custom car culture in Japan and the world at large. Well, guess what? Today we're gonna find out. We made a video about it. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Liberty Walk. Oh, hey, thanks to Jackery for sponsoring today's video. You might be wondering why I'm wearing this hockey jersey while eating poutine with a fresh pint of maple syrup. Well, we're celebrating the launch of Jackery's new Canadian web website. That's right, the future of solar and portable energy is now available to our Canadian friends. Stop apologizing for losing electricity during winter and take the power back with the help of Jackery's amazing products, like their all new camping light with its portability, adjustable brightness, and a lifespan of 54,000 hours. It's a perfect power pair with Jackery's generators. Check out the Explorer 1000. It's Jackery's most popular model with the ability to supply 1,000 watts, enough to run a full-size refrigerator. Perfect for keeping your bagged milk nice and cold. <laughs> Plus, it has multiple ports, not just AC outlets, but also a DC port and USB charging ports. Perfect for that road trip up Icefields Parkway. That's right, I know where that's at. And you can take it to another level with Jackery's Solar Generator 1500. It's a real massive moose with its incredible 1800 running wattage capacity, allowing you to power 99% of your devices and appliances. Oh yeah, I'm just doing a Minnesota accent, really. So eat up your butter tart, get off your Muskoka, and pause that episode of Kim's Convenience. Go to ca.jackery.com today by clicking the link in the description below. Plus, everyone can get 10% off with the promo code JACKERYCA. That's more money you can spend on gravy to pour over a plate of poutine. Mmm, oh, that's a nice gravy. That's a lot of gravy. <laughs> Liberty Walk makes some of the most insane body kits the world never asked for. Now, whether you like them or not, you have to admit they've made a huge impression on car culture thanks to their passion for innovation and commitment to quality. Plus, they cut up some insanely expensive exotic cars, which takes a lot of guts to even attempt. You gotta admit. The founder of Liberty Walk is Kato Wataru. Kato san was born in 1967 on the outskirts of Japan's third largest city, Nagoya. Now, Nagoya is often called the Detroit of Japan because people love building cars there, and Japanese M&M is from there. Hey, I'm a destroyer from Nagoya. Talk through Yoshinoya. As a teen in the 80s, Kato-san grew obsessed with the idea of taking a regular car and turning it into something special, something aesthetically dangerous, like adding a harmonica to a rock band, blues traveler style, the hook will bring you back. So give it in, give it in, let me again. Now this is most likely because of all the influence of the bad boys of Japanese car culture. Of course, I'm talking about the Bosuzoku. The Bosuzoku. The Bosuzoku. I've talked about these guys before in our Rocket Bunny episode. Back when I hosted Bumper to Bumper, we did a video on them. I'll put the link to both of those in the description below. If you like this video and you're like, I wanna watch more Donut, uh, you can click on those. They'll be right there. They're really good. Now the word Boso, translates to crazy or loud, and Zoku means group. Put them together, and you got some crazy loud guys. I can't identify with that at all! These specific crazy loud guys were former World War II pilots who started modifying cars and motorcycles to reflect their personalities. Now, they wanted their vehicles to be impossible to ignore, and they succeeded, <laughs> okay? These cars have elongated fenders, wide squared off arches and transplanted headlights, but the vibrant paintwork and 12 foot long exhaust pipes made these cars a little divisive. <laughs> Some people loved them and others, the police included, branded them as a menace to society. Now let's not forget, this all takes place in Japan, all right? A country where the dominant culture tends to be more modest like a mouse and respectful of tradition than some other places, all right? So the Bosuzoku were living out loud and 
freaking out the squares, man, just like your aunt when she finalized her divorce. She's got all new underwear, and she's wearing a toe ring. Eat your heart out, former Uncle Chris. In the 1980s, the rest of the world didn't give a hoot what a bunch of crazy loud guys in Japan were doing, but that was all about to change. In the 1990s, the culture of car modification in Japan would gain global exposure for the first time, and Kato saw this as an opportunity. In 1993, Kato realized how he could make his own stamp on car culture. At the tender age of 26, he took a major leap and founded his own company, a company where he could capitalize on the global explosion of interest in everything Japanese, a company where he could bring his own creative take on the Bosuzoku style to the world, a company that would go on to become one of the most respected and controversial modification companies in history. That company was Liberty Walk. Now the name Liberty Walk, a name Kato-san picked to represent the freedom a customer has to customize their car in any way that they'd want. Now this was totally in line with Liberty Walk's foundational principles. Kato-san originally formed the company to change the perception of car workshops and to spread positive energy by bringing a smile to the faces of its customers. I love that. Plus, the car-obsessed renegade wanted to brand himself as a radical and unique builder. And to do that, Kato-san started selling body kits for cute little K-cars. Now, we know what K-cars are. They're, they're lovable little Pixar characters, are Japan's everyday economy cars, and are a perfect example of the Japanese culture of restraint and function over form. We're talking beauties, like the Suzuki Wagon R, the Daihatsu Move, and the Subaru Rex. Kato-san's idea to sell body kits for K-cars was radical and really put Liberty Walk on the map. Business was booming! Now today, K-cars are often modified and personalized by their owners, but not back in the 90s. No, sir. Liberty Walk was at the forefront of the movement to personalize them. He crafted some of the most interesting and radical parts and kits, and spoiler alert, he still does it to this day. He's probably out there doing it right now. I don't know, what time is it in Japan? He's either sleeping or he's doing it, okay? For example, you can buy a body kit for a Daihatsu Kopen and turn it from this into this. Now around 1996, Kato-san started importing American cars and supercars from companies like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Hummer. <laughs> because what does a Hummer need to be? Wider, I agree. Not nearly wide enough. Now this was another radical departure from the average Japanese car shop. And for a while, Kato-san made a decent living through his modified K-car parts and kits, as well as selling American sedans to rich Japanese businessmen. But something was missing. All right, ever the renegade, Kato-san became focused on Liberty Walk's future. He thought about his influences and his love for 80s and 90s Japanese tuner culture and the Bosuzoku. The Bosuzoku. The inspiration he got from vibrant colors, radical lines, and the unique one-of-one -one adjustments that turned a car from a collection of parts into a rolling work of art. He thought about the reason he loved to modify cars in the first place, the smiles, the smiles that he saw on his customers' faces. And then Kato-san realized what his next iconoclastic step would be. It was time to start modifying exotic cars. Now, this was in the 2000s. Modifying performance cars was going to a bunch of people's absolute the up. Now, one of the first cars Kato-san modified in this style is the reason why the purists form such a, um, let's say strong, let's stick with strong opinion of him, okay? Now, there's no easy way to say this, right? But it's, the first car he modified was sort of a car that you don't modify. They don't like it when you do it. And I'm just gonna rip the Band-Aid off here and... It was a Ferrari. He cut up a Ferrari. Sorry, Enzo! And to make it hurt a little more for you traditionalists out there, it wasn't just any Ferrari. No, it was a Ferrari F40. This was the last car that Enzo Ferrari signed off on personally. For a ton of people, the Ferrari F40 is the reason that they are into cars. The F40 is not a car that you're supposed to f with, okay? Ferrari F40 ain't nothing f with. That would be like taking an angle grinder to the Statue of Liberty and carving up a pair of jorts. 
You just don't do it. And yet, Karasan did. And you know what? It looked amazing. Now, even though this early supercar modification doesn't exactly show the full Liberty Walk style, the F40 showed purposeful mods and artistic restraint. Karasan redesigned the rear fender to include two giant, yet functional, functional. Okay. Venturi tunnels. The front lip spoiler was elongated. He added fixed headlights and a manually adjustable rear wing for added downforce. Despite the respect he showed the Ferrari, as well as the functionality of the mods, people hated it. <laughs> The F40, along with Karasan's similarly modified F50, yeah, <laughs> blew up the car forums in Reddit. This was a pre-Kardashian breaking of the internet, all right? Some people, myself included, think it was a mark of fearless genius to take a car that people are obsessed with and change it. Other people, and by other people, I mean spaghetti slurp and stallion stands, thought it was a sin, the absolute worst thing you can do, aside from overcooking your pasta. But Kato-san didn't do it for them. He did it for himself, to make himself happy. And, and as long as he was happy, there were no problems. But if he wasn't happy, then we got problems. <laughs> Another massive moment in Liberty Walk's story was in 2008 when a buddy of Kato's son called him up. He goes, Kato, son, I'm over my Diablo, but the new Lambo lineup is basic as hell, man. And the Mercy Lago's way too tame looking. Can you help me? And Kato's son was like, hell yeah, brother, I can help you, bro. We'll ship a Mercy Lago straight to Japan so I can blow people's minds off. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not sure they had those accents, uh, but that's basically what went down. Okado-san cut into the Mercy Lagos fenders and completely redesigned the car, drawing on design elements from classic Lamborghini shines, as well as his own Bosuzoku influenced Japanese style. And what Liberty Walk ended up with was this. The first, but definitely not the last, Lamborghini modified by Liberty Walk. In 2009, Liberty Walk brought the car to Las Vegas for SEMA. It was the company's first time exhibiting at the world famous car modification show and was also the first real worldwide exposure Liberty Walk got for its high-end modification work. And even though Liberty Walk fits in at SEMA these days, they were definitely the black sheep at the car show in 2009. To put that into context, this was about four years before Rocket Bunny went to SEMA. It's one year before RWB. So as you can probably guess, people had opinions. Yes, the radical redesign of the Lambo blew up the internet again. But after all that exposure, no new orders came into the company. Kato-san became concerned that his modifications were unacceptable to the car community. He'd only ever gone with his gut, never listened to the crowd, and instead focused on how a car made him feel. Maybe he had been wrong to make such drastic changes to supercars. No, he wasn't! Like with all good things, it just takes time for people to catch up to a visionary idea. Like, how long did it take for people to like Rocket Bunny? Van Gogh died before he earned a single Dutch money. Operation Ivy broke up the day that their album came out. But Kato Sun's treatment of the modern supercars was met with far more praise. Probably because he wanted to use the F40 and F50 to shock people out of their comfort zones. Or maybe the styling of supercars in the 2010s were just kind of tame. This new crop of supercars didn't look as aggressive or exciting as past iterations, which is where Liberty Walk's body kits and mods came in. Suddenly, these supercars were unexpected and stoke-inducing again. A Lamborghini Gallardo modified by Liberty Walk didn't look like an Audi R8 with a different body kit. It looked like a freaking Liberty Walk Lamborghini. At SEMA 2013, Liberty Walk exhibited two cars a Nissan GTR and a Ferrari 458 Italia. The internet kind of predictably at this point went absolutely big. Shouts to Pharrell. Liberty Walk was the talk of the town. Everyone wanted to see these cars with their own two eyes. Everyone wanted a photo. They wanted to straight up make these cars their girlfriends. Liberty Walk was officially the hottest ticket on the scene and the orders, they started rolling in. Since then, Liberty Walk has only grown in popularity. The company was inundated with so many worldwide orders for their Lamborghini Machine body kits, as well as fully custom cars, that they had to acquire additional workshops. Now, that's not bad for a company that started in a single garage that could only accommodate three cars at a time. Liberty Walk was so busy that Kato Sutton set up sister companies to handle their customers every wild whim. LB Performance handles customers who want to add a few flares and extra details in the form of removable body kits, suspension, and wheel upgrades, all right? These cars can be put back to stock if you ever want to sell it. LB Works is for people who want a Kato-san original. Your car 
get shipped to Japan and is modified in the shop by hand. But no takesies backsies. They're gonna cut that open. Then we have Liberty Works GT, uh, box fendered race cars. Enough said. Finally, Kato-san stays true to his roots with LB Nation, which makes parts exclusively for domestic Japanese cars, including K cars. Now for the workers at Liberty Walk, the motto on the shop floor is no boundaries, no limitations. And trust me, they live up to that motto. And to prove it to you, let's look at some fucking cars already, all right? One of the cars that launched Liberty Walk into the stratosphere is the R35 GTR. It's one of their most customized with three different kits. Each offers a different blend of performance versus looks. Same goes for the Ferrari 458. Kato-san and his team took this sleek Italian aerodynamic beauty and crafted it into an absolutely mean wine chugging horse. Liberty Walk has also modified the Ferrari 488, the McLaren 650S streetcar, and even a Lamborghini Miura, which is a replica of a Miura, but still looked freaking so, so sick. The replica stands just 32 and a half inches from the ground with Kato-san's typical stance and unfussy redesigned front and rear fenders. Again, this gorgeous work of art is just a replica, so please chill out. Don't comment, just kidding. Definitely comment. It helps us with the algorithm. All hail the algorithm. Now, in the crowded room, that is supercar modifiers. Kato-san is a man who stands alone. Liberty Walk is more than just a shock shop. The artists at Liberty Walk clearly love cars and take massive aesthetic risks while also considering the flow of the car's original bodywork. It's not about just bolting on a pair of fenders, right? The sign that hangs in the Liberty Walk showroom may do the best job of summing up their eccentric founder's ethos. As long as it's a car, we can do it. And above all, let's be happy together. Help us make room for some new stock by buying some old favorites at our Donut Media garage sale by going to donutmedia.com and getting some sick t-shirts on sale. There's some old limited release shirts in dark mode that uh, we don't have very many quantities of, so you gotta act fast. The sale runs from the 24th through the 27th of March, so you gotta act fast. Go to donutmedia.com. It's your chance to even grab a classic donut logo tee for under 20 bucks. Click that link down there. Get you a sick tea. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and everything else on Donut. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to make sure you don't miss anything. If you want some Donut apparel, uh, including this hat, go to DonutMedia.com. We're dropping new items every week. I'm super, super stoked about it. Uh, my best friend in the world, Andy, designs it all. Um, I love you.